Good morning. Good morning. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are to worship. 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 Here we are to worship. Delighted that you have chosen to be here this morning and pray that indeed God would bless you in this time that we share together and that when you leave from this place you will be glad that you have been in the Lord's house. As we come to a time of looking at our announcements, first of all I want to thank the family of James Lincoln for the flowers that indeed give beauty to our service this morning and uh, to indeed appreciate those and those that have been um, given in the past weeks as well. So we are indeed very appreciative of that. This is All Saints Sunday. I hope that indeed we will rejoice in our saints and we will be remembering some of the uh, saints of our church that have uh, died in this past year and uh, later in the service. We always want to welcome any first time guests you stop by a, a welcome table. We have a gift that awaits you, and also we would love to hear more about who you are and uh, where you come from. Uh, at the end of the service today, we take up a collection for the Benevolent Fund. <coughs> that fund goes to be of assistance to folks that are in need in our community. And uh, well, we thank you for your gifts as you support this cause. The Monday night budget and stewardship uh, meeting has been changed due to our involvement in volleyball and the regional tournaments. Our kids are involved and we are excited about that. So we will be meeting immediately after church today in the fellowship hall. Is that still on? Okay. And then if need be, we'll have other meetings uh, down the road. So keep that in mind if you're a part of the budget and stewardship team. Uh, the Spirit of Love class will be going to uh, lunch on Tuesday. It will leave, the bus will leave here at 11, so if you are part of that class and able to go, we ask that you would meet then. The Fulpers of Supply Committee will meet on Tuesday night at 7 in the Fellowship Hall, so if you are a part of that committee, please keep that in mind as us. We've got some things that are coming up for a call business meeting that we will have that is mentioned in your bulletin coming up on Wednesday, November the 20th. Our Wednesday night activities are uh, none for this week except for choir practice. The choir will be practicing at 7 p.m. So we encourage you to come out. I know they're working on the cantata. So uh, that's an important time of year uh, for our practices. On Monday the 11th, the prayer, uh, the mid-time Lord prayer meeting is all of that Baptist church at 7 p.m. Uh, we're having a, <coughs> excuse me, we're having a fundraiser that is on your insert. It's a barbecue fundraiser that we're having for Faith Leachio, a sister of B. Fleet. It's going to be here on Saturday, November the 16th from 4 to 7. Hope that you'll pass the word. This is one time when, yes, I encourage you to use social media. I'm not usually a big fan of that, but I think there are good, positive things that we can do with that. So get the word out and let them know and, and see if we can get our community in to support that. And as I said, we do have a call business meeting coming up on the 20th at 6.30 and the agenda is listed there in your bulletin. It has to be announced and it has to be these things that come up for discussion and those only. Um, are there any other announcements? Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
your bulletin. I'll read the light print if you'll then read the bold. Trust in the Lord. The Lord Worship the Lord in holy array. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected our prayer or removed his steadfast love from us. Let us pray together. Father, we come into your presence. Lord, thanking you for the beauty of this day. Thanking you, Father, for the glorious time of year and the changing of the seasons. A time, Father, which reminds us that indeed as the seasons change that your love never does. It is indeed a steadfast love. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, we are grateful for the opportunity to be in your house, to join together as brothers and sisters of Christ Jesus as your adopted children to give you all the praise and honor and glory that is due unto your name. Father, send your Holy Spirit to encourage us and strengthen us for the living of these days. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of praise is hymn number 48. Morning has broken. Let us stand together.
was always just wonderful to my aunt, Lavinia Sneed, the sister. She really took really good care of her. All right, thank you. And I had others during this week that also shared the sentiments of her kindness and goodness that she showed to folks in the community. All right, uh, Bonnie Ferry. Now, as many of you all know, and how many of you remember Bonnie? I think as many of you all may know, I grew up in the same neighborhood that Bonnie Ferry lived, and uh, she was a, a part of my, my, my network of friends and family growing up. I uh, shared during her service uh, just how much she meant to me and uh, my life and how supportive she was uh, indeed and encouraged me along the way. Um, I can remember the first time I went back to visit Bonnie after I became the pastor here at Omni Grove and I sat in front of her and I said, Bonnie, do you know who I am? And she got this wonderful smile and expression and she says, Bob Rand, do you think I'll ever forget you? <laughs> Now, I'm not sure how to take that by the way. You know, it's okay, you know, because uh, she was indeed uh, quite a, a wonderful, wonderful lady and very uh, supportive and encouraging, I know, in her church. Is there anyone that would like to share a word about Bonnie? She never aged. We went to go Christmas Carol, and she looked the same from my childhood until the last time I saw her. She never aged. Never aged. Christmas right. Claire all is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Bill and I used to visit her every so often, but look, all I can say was a nice visit. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I know that uh, none of you all remember Iona Ransom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Iona was was quite a quite a lady. And, uh, one thing I can say about Iona is you didn't have to question what she was thinking, <laughs> right? You knew exactly what was on her mind because she spoke her mind. Joel, probably about like you would, right? If you think it, you're going to say it. Let us know what's going on. You know, I always admired that. I was not always thrilled probably with what she had to say, mind you, but at least I knew where she came from. And, I didn't have to question that. So who would like to share just a remembrance of Iona? Yes. I always remember how she would sit down and play the piano. Really? She loved music. She could play the piano and sing. And I loved her. Yep. Even when she was up there in the nursing home, we'd go in and she'd play the piano when we would be well singing there at Dockside and she could play a piano. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, and I understand she taught herself to play. Her so mother was, it was a marvelous thing. All right, Marie Bryant. How many of you remember Marie? I like to think of her. Huh? I like to think of Dennis room with her. Her and I grew up with school together. And she's completely blind to me. And I went back and I said, uh, Marie, don't you know him? She said, no, but you're a darn good-looking fellow. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know the point of that story, right? <laughs> her eyesight started to fail her as well. <laughs> okay. Anyone else want to share or remember? All right, as we move on. Uh, we have Bill Hodges. How many of you remember Bill? Yeah. All right. Now, I didn't know Bill in Omni Grove because I wasn't around by that time, but uh, he sort of married into a, an extended part of my family, and I would run into uh, them in, in the uh, stores and along the way and always had wonderful conversations. Who would like to share remembrance of Bill? I was married to him for 17 years and you couldn't ask for a better husband. Mm -hmm. And when he had all hammers, he would sit at the table all day uh, drawing pictures and writing little notes and I'd fly them all over the house. And, but uh, he didn't die of all hammers, he died <coughs> of a chronic kidney disease, which I found out later. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Never heard him complain once that he felt bad. Not mm. once. That's wonderful. He always had a story. When he wanted to go to talk to him or something, he always had a story to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We and called him Walt Disney. I'm sorry. To us, he looked like Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mary Jane Courtney. And I didn't know Mary Jane. And uh, when she died, I was, um, where was I? I was in Europe. Never mind. I don't know where I was. <laughs> How many remember Mary Jane? I understand she was extremely active here in Omni Grove. Who would like to share a remembrance of Mary Jane? She was a devoted choir member. She loved more than anything else to sing in the choir. If she wasn't going to be here on Sunday, I got a phone call to say why she wasn't going to be here. She also loved to send cards. And Jean Hill and I have a thing of sending cards on all holidays of Mary Jane. I miss, I miss this year and I will leave and we're going to get something from Mary Jane because we've always got a card. Black mm -hmm. hair and red lips. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Barbara Jones. How many of you remember Barbara? She was another choir member. And I remember Barbara and uh, her husband very well. And uh, him leading the choir, his love for music. But Barbara was always a part of the choir. I first met her when I had a one year teaching experience down at Wilton uh, Elementary School. And Barbara and I became friends there and had lots of connections. But who would like to share about Barbara? I know she had an illness that she couldn't overcome, and she was very sweet uh, to visit her. Okay. Yes. And our most recent um, person to remember is Nellie Blake. Who would like to share about Nellie? I know Nellie's been away for some time uh, from our community, but she was here for a uh, good number of years here in Harmony Grove, raising her family, and, and then later moved away. But does anybody would like to share remembrance of Nellie? I remember as a little girl going over there because mom and dad would go visit because her brother married my mom's sister. So Nellie's brother was my uncle. But Nellie always felt like my aunt mm -hmm. because she just made me feel like I was family. So she was just a sweetheart. Anyone else? We always want to remember those of our church family on All Saints Day, uh, All Saints Sunday. All Saints Day is actually, by the way, November the 1st. Because October the 31st is All Hallows Eve. And I always think that it's important that we claim those expressions of Christianity that have developed down through the uh, centuries in Christendom and remember those people who have indeed had an impact on our lives and as they pass through our church and as they serve in our community we are indeed enriched and blessed because of them so I do thank you for remembering them and continuing to be supportive to their families in that time. As we come to the time for the prayers of the people, before I end, I always ask you if there are any uh, places in the world that you've seen the Lord at work this week, and if you have something that you would like to share. I remember saying that David Giselle, uh, Katie, Katie Giselle, I met Katie Giselle in the first Kingdom Church. She had a beautiful smile every time she walked to the church. And she was a very sweet lady, very sweet lady. And she always said I was her deacon. And she always wrote poems. And she'd always come in every Sunday morning and tell me a little poem or something that she had loved me. Laugh and talk to me. And I, I just, I missed her so much when she passed away. Okay. Or when she left the church, really. Yeah, she was, uh, she was sick for a while, that's for sure. And on that note, I'll go ahead and share with you the poem that I had heard, uh, brought with me this morning. And there's another that I know we published last uh, year in the November newsletter. How many of you have last year's November newsletter? 
See, I knew that. <laughs> and the only two that have them are right here, you know, imagine that. That sort of goes with the job. All right, but her, her poem is entitled, My Return to God. I had hit the very bottom, and I didn't know what to do, when in my very deep despair, I called out to you. You heard my every word, dear God, and you told me not to fear that my sins had been forgiven and you wiped away each tear. Oh God, how I feel so humble when I think of how you forgave all the sins that I had committed and through your son, my soul was saved. You took me from the very depths and let my soul go free. What can I do for you, dear Lord, when you've done so much for me? I think it's quite an appropriate uh, poem for us to keep in mind because we are so blessed. And the question is, what can we do for God who has done so much for us? As we think about the appreciation uh, and what God has done for us. And one of the things that I wanted to say to you this morning was how much I did indeed appreciate last Sunday with your appreciation, the pastor appreciation luncheon. Uh, that was a spectacular time. It was a very enjoyable time. I appreciated the gifts that came from the church and some of the members within the church. And I do want to simply uh, say to you how much it is... Uh, uh, means to me for you to show me that appreciation. And I also want all the people of the uh, congregation to go by my office before you leave today. It was painful. <laughs> you know, you've got to go see this, folks. And it is, indeed, as Jean said, it is a mess. But you know, when you get a nice um, a poem that is written to you to encourage you and support you, and then there are lots of streamers, by the way, and balloons, and I would hate to say what else. I didn't go but so far um, in there today. I actually had to go into your office to get everything done. Um, I hunted down, I don't know, search out diligently the people involved. Not that that was difficult, by the way, you know. Um, but I just think you ought to go check it out because I'm afraid people have heard me too often say, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. And this must have been somebody's idea of fun. If you can't see that, there are millions of I will keep the point for a long, long time, I can assure you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else that has just seen God here in the midst? I know we had a wonderful weekend for Oyster Festival, and I just thank the Lord's over, by the way. But, you know, I, <laughs> I know that many came in and enjoyed it, and it's a good time. And I understand, David, that you did well. I'm glad to hear that. And so all of those kinds of things we rejoice in. As we look at the past uh, time for the prayer of the people, did I hear somebody else? Look in the uh, fellowship hall and look at all the shoeboxes. Look in the fellowship hall and what? Look at all the shoeboxes. We've truly been blessed. Oh, yeah. And I've been given more money this week to shop again for them. So. Oh. No stop it. Take Barbara with you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could teach her how to shop. <laughs> There, I'm a slow learner in that department, I hate to say it. <laughs> but um, it's, um, it's amazing the response that has been to the shoeboxes. Um, it, it's um, one of the missions of the church that has always been very important to me, so I was glad to come to Homley Grove and find out that it's so well supported here. We are going to exceed our goal this year. Our goal was 350 shoeboxes, 
and we will exceed that, I know. Amen. And pumpkin is the best shop where I, that I have run into, although there are quite a few uh, here in the church that can, uh, can compete with that, I think. You might have some competition, but we appreciate all of those who have indeed given the money and uh, supported this cause, as well as making the shoe boxes themselves. It's a pretty exciting uh, time uh, to do that, so thank you very much. All right, as we look at the <clears throat> prayers of the people, are there any additions or updates or information that you would like to add? Yes. Um, I don't know if Brenda's upstairs or not, but Charlie Armstead's dad will have triple bypass tomorrow morning at Riverside and Newport News, so we need to be in prayer for Mr. Armstead. Okay. Um, I think it was kind of unexpected. Uh, yes, it was unexpected, but I don't think she was here. Okay, she, and she was also here. Uh, we need to add Sonny Revere to our prayer list. I think his name is Everett, yeah. his real name. He had a stroke Thursday evening coming home from work. He was actually driving, and his wife picked up on his voice, <coughs> and they flew him to Sentara, was my understanding. Okay. Um, they got it there rather quickly, so pray for a full recovery. Right. Anyone else? I think we need to keep the families and the community of the three young gentlemen in Tab from Tab High School that were killed in that accident. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Really tragedy. Yes, three very young. All 16. Yeah, 16 year old. Three. Yeah, so we'll certainly keep them in our prayers. Are there others? Let us pray together. Father, we pause in the stillness of this time and in this place. Acknowledging, Father, a love that is so great that we know we cannot totally comprehend it. But we know, Father, that indeed you love us with an steadfast, everlasting love. And Father, we do indeed thank you for this All Saints Sunday, when we can remember those indeed in our church community that have died in this past year, and that we can spend time, Father, to remember the way they touched our lives, the difference, Father, that they made here in this church and in this community, the way, Father, they loved you and they served you faithfully. But, Father, we know that indeed it is upon the saints that your kingdom's work is built. And so, Father, we pray that indeed for each of the families, you have provided the comfort and support and the encouragement that they need. That you have walked with them, Father, and that you continue to walk with them as they go through the various seasons of the year. And Lord, we always pray that indeed they will spend time remembering that they will hold on to those wonderful family memories of good times and wonderful opportunities. The blessings, Father, that you gave to each and every one and the way you enrich their lives. For, Father, you gave to them as you give to us our homes. You gave to them, Father, the food and the clothing and all the material things that they had for every good and perfect gift comes from above. You gave to them a wonderful family. A family, Father, as you give to us where we find love, support and encouragement. You provided for the Father communities in which they lived, neighbors and friends. You gave to them, Father, faith through Christ Jesus. For you are the one who stirs within our hearts and calls us. And we thank you, Father, for the service that they gave to this church and all the places, Father, that indeed they ministered. And Father, we praise you for the opportunity indeed 
to pray for the families of these we remember. And Father, to pray for those that are on our prayer list, ones that have been added, those, Father, that have been here for some time. Lord, you know more clearly than we will ever know what the desires of their hearts are, the problems, Father, that they are facing, the concerns that they have within their own situations. And oftentimes, Father, we think we know, and yet we do not. May we be those who are willing to listen and hear their concerns and their desires. And Father, we pray that as we lift them up in prayer, as you hear our prayer, that they will feel a sense of your presence, your arms wrapped around them. And that, Father, you will call us to be your hands and your feet here in this world today. That we would reach out to them through notes and calls and, Father, cards, visits, food, whatever you lay upon our hearts to do, Father, that we would indeed be your servants here on earth. And, Father, we thank you for this day. A day, Father, that we can come together as your people. That we can worship and praise your holy name. And so, Father, indeed we ask your presence, your Holy Spirit, to be with us, to bless us, to send us forth, Father, in your love and grace of Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we make our prayer. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 416, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, verses 1, 2, and 4.
share with you scripture this morning is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and 11 and 12. Listen to God's word, Paul, Savannah, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians. And God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecution and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Father, as we come to your word, we always ask, Father, that you would indeed still our hearts and our minds during this time. Open us, Father, to receive the words and encouragement and challenge the word, Father, that you have for each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray that indeed, as you speak to us, we might hear and respond as you would have us. When we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. As I've already said, November the 1st is All Saints Day. And it's celebrated, my friends, with special services throughout much of Christendom. October the 31st was a pagan celebration of Halloween, which Christians took over and redefined, as you will, as we have done with many, many pagan kinds of celebration, and it was redefined as All Hallows Eve, a time indeed to remember, remember the saints. So today on this All Saints Sunday, we too are called to remember the saints. The scriptures encourage the remembering of the saints, remembrance of our history, knowing from whence we came, and indeed celebrating and giving thanks to God for those who have had such an impact on our journeys of faith. You know, my friends, in the Old Testament, it often does a roll call, if you will, of the people of faith. How many times you can go back and read through the scriptures when God says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He was a God, my friend, of Sarah, the God of Deborah, the God indeed of those that he called to lead his people. He goes forth and tells us about these mighty men and women of faith that he called into service. And if you go to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, you find faith defined in these terms. It is a substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, <clears throat> followed by the acts of faith of the saints. And then he remembers them. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and all of the list of prophets that goes on and on and on, they are recorded for us. We remember reading the scriptures. We know the saints of the early church, the apostles that served so faithfully with Jesus. We remember clearly the names of Peter, James, and John. We know about Matthew and Levi and Thaddeus, we know these apostles. We know about Paul and the work that he did in spreading the church. We know about Stephen and Priscilla and Aquila. We know about Timothy and Phoebe and Lydia. 
They are stories that have been shared with us down through the ages in our Sunday school classes and in sermons from time to time. But you know, it's not just the people in the scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament that we remember. We also remember those saints of our own church. You know, my friends, we have quite a plaque of remembrance here in our sanctuary. Unfortunately, today, it's behind the screen over here. But it's a plaque. Does anybody know, be able to tell me who it is to read plaque for? Walter. Walter. All right. It's a plaque for your first pastor. You know, your first pastor, Reverend Walker. And indeed, there are, throughout this church, as you look around, you find remembrances of people that are the saints. They're on some of our pews as they're listed. They're in our windows as they're listed. They're throughout the church because these people, indeed, in their walk of faith, gave support and encouragement to our church and to those who, indeed, there touch the lives. You have an entire showcase of your past pastors. And I do indeed think that it's important to remember the people that have led your congregation in the past. But I'm going to say to you, my friends, that I think the people that were most important in my life, and I suspect in your lives, were those people that were lay leaders right here in this church. Those people, indeed, who walked with you, the men and women who served as deacons, as WMU leaders, as Sunday school teachers, as training union directors. You know, these people are the people who led us to faith, who indeed touched our lives, who shared their journey of faith as God was working within us to bring us indeed to that same place. And that, my friends, is what Paul is addressing as he talks about those who are increasing in their faith. That's what Paul is encouraging the saints of his day to do based upon their remembrance of those that have gone before that they are maturing as Christians, those who are being transformed, as the scripture says, by the Holy Spirit into the likeness of God. He is indeed talking about those people, <coughs> encouraging them as he is encouraging us to continue to grow in the love of God. And as we grow in the love of God, we grow in the love of our neighbors, the love of one another. You know, the world wants us to believe that saints are those people who are perfect. Those people who wear the wonderful halo. You see the angels with the halo, the saints with the halo. I always remind people that mine's a little crooked and needs a little dusting off. You know, because saints are not defined that way in the scripture. And there's one reason, by the way, that that is. Because the scriptures are very clear that there was only one perfect person that ever lived. And we know who. The Lord Jesus Christ was the only perfect person. But we are saints by the definition of the scriptures. Not perfect. We are sanctified by God's grace through the Holy Spirit. We are called out to be his people we are those who are dedicated to worship and the service of God. 
There are two hallmarks throughout the scripture that tell us what it is to be a sign of the Christian life. One is the love of God through faith, and the scripture says the other is the love of neighbor, the love of one another. You know, when Jesus was questioned, as he often was in his journey of life, he was asked the question, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? We know that there are ten commandments. Jesus, pick one. What's the greatest commandment of all? The young man questions. I can imagine as a smile goes across his face, he looks and says, Oh, yeah, about that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your mind. You are to love the Lord your God with every ounce of your being. This is the first and great commandment. It's the second. The second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Over and over again, my friends, Jesus taught his disciples that they were called to love. He says, love one another as I have loved you. Love so that the world will know that you are my disciples. And that, my friends, is the reason that Paul, here in our text for today, is indeed praying that the Thessalonians will be worthy of their call. And that God will fulfill by his power of the Holy Spirit every good resolve and the work of faith so that so that the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be glorified in you and you in him. Listen to those words of encouragement that Paul writes to those Thessalonians. Words to say, keep on doing what it is that you do. Walk the life that God has chosen for you. And my friends, these words come to us today. For scripture is alive and well. It is a breathing document that indeed comes to us with the same degree of force and hopefully with the same result that they had for those Thessalonians all those many, many years ago. For my friends, their words of encouragement, their words to keep on keeping on in the faith, their words to stay the course when we get discouraged, their words that tell us to endure to the end, their words that tell us to fight the good fight, there are words to tell us that we are never to give up. You know, I remember the saints of Harmony Grove, the men and women that encouraged me in my journey of faith. And I thank God for them. For it's because of those men and women who encouraged me, who taught me, who pushed me, I am who I am. Take that any way you want it. But they molded me and made me because they were people of faith and a part of my story. But you know, there's one story in Baptist history that I think is well worth our remembering. And I don't believe we should ever give up on our history. She was the daughter of the Old South. She was reared in the finest of tradition of Christian culture, wealth, education, with all of the advantages far beyond that of her day. She
She was schooled at the Virginia Female Seminary. She received a Master's of Arts degree. She and her friends started a successful school for girls down in Georgia where she served for many years. And then on one occasion, she walked down the aisle of a Baptist church in response to a pastor's plea for a missionary. She was convinced that she was to go to China. So on September the 1st of 1873, she sailed to China. She immediately immersed herself into the study of Chinese language, life, literature, history, culture, the whole nine yards. But the Chinese, she was at first known as a devil old woman. But she continued to teach classes, to share the gospel message. At first it was in a small boarding school, and later it was on the streets there in China. The work was hard, the hours were long, but the joy, the joy that she received from being able to share the gospel and to see it spread. She made an appeal to the Foreign Mission Board for missionaries, but there was no money. So she wasn't willing to give up. She did what any good woman would do. She, contact, she contacted lots of other women in the Baptist faith, and she asked them to get organized, and indeed they did. Within a few months, they took on the first Christmas offering, which was a huge success. They raised enough money to send three missionaries to China. One of her favorite stories that she shared when she was able to come on furlough after training these new missionaries was that about visiting one day nine families. And one of the customs there in China was out of politeness, you ate what was served to you. And each family shared with her one poached egg. And so she ate the eggs and all the water they were poached in, only to come home and find her host apologizing that all that she had for supper was two eggs, <laughs> which she ate. She became known as the heavenly book visitor, no longer the old devil woman. She was faced with many difficulties, but the most difficult of all was a famine that spread over China after the <coughs> Japanese-Russian War. And it seemed like the SBC had forgotten about China. The foreign, missionary, foreign mission board was in debt. There was no money. She used all of her savings, all of her inheritance, all of her salary. And when she was 70 years old, because the Chinese were starving, she refused to eat. On December the 1st, she was so ill that doctors ordered her home back to America. So on December the 20th, she set sail. On December the 24th, Christmas Eve, Lottie Moon died in Japan. She was cremated according to Japanese law and customs, and her ashes were brought back to America. They are buried here in the state of Virginia in Crewe. Her stone reads, Miss Lottie Moon, 1840-1912, with the words that follow, 40 years of missionary of the Southern Baptist Convention to China, faithful unto death. Oh, my friends, what a legacy we have as Baptists to know those people of faith who have gone before us, to remember these persons which we need indeed to hold on to. Next month, we will once again celebrate a Christmas offering 
in the name of Lottie Moon. I hope it's a tradition that we never let go of. You know, that is the ultimate word of our text for today. It is a word of sacrificial love. A love unto death. As it says on Lottie Moon's stone, we are called to remember the saints of our faith, but we are also called to remember we are the saints of our faith. We are sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are his people. We are his saints. Ditch the halo, but live the life as God would have us to live it. Praise be to God Amen. for his calling. What will our legacy be? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for those who have gone before us. And Father, we pray that indeed as your saints you will use us for the building of your kingdom, for the love of our neighbor, the love of one another, that we would continue, Father, to grow in you. Bless us, Father, as we come to this time, coming to your table. May we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I ask the deacons if they come at this time. Paul wrote words of encouragement to many of the churches that indeed he had had the privilege of establishing in the name of Christ Jesus. And he shared with the Corinthians the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For he says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Praise be to God, my friends. He will come again. Let us pray. Father, as we come to this, your table, we thank you, Father, that indeed we are with all of Christendom who celebrate and remember. Who celebrate, Father, the saints that have gone before and who celebrate the remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, your Son. Father, we praise you for it. And Lord, we ask that indeed you would send your Holy Spirit now to examine us. <clears throat> Father, bring to our remembrances the things that you would have us to change within our lives. And Lord, give us the courage and the strength to do it. And Father, we ask now that you would send down your blessings and bless the bread and the cup, that they might indeed bring to our remembrance that great gift of Christ Jesus. In whose name we pray. Amen. The scripture says that on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave it to his disciples, and so we come this morning to receive it.
chair for us. We are told that as often we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Praise be to God, my friends, he will come again. It is our custom to stand and sing together the first verse of Blessed Be the Time. Now and forevermore. In Christ's name. Amen.